Just completed the tour inside all of the greenhouses at Stoneyston Park Hotel. We just come outside to have a quick look with Dale. He's growing some great stuff. Right in front of us we've got some of the rhubarb that is used in the restaurant by the chefs. Dale is one of the head gardeners in the in the gar kitchen garden. So right in front of us we've got one of Dale's techniques. And are these willows? Yeah they are, yeah. So these are the the cuttings you'd take then to make your willow water. Yeah, that's right, yeah, that's another video I'll do. But um that that way of growing them, I think it's probably the biggest tip I've got for any veg gardening is to rather than grow beans and anything like that the traditional way in sort of like a, a wigwam is to grow them like that the opposite way and then that way for a start they grow outwards so it's easy to pick them you get much better light all through the middle of the row so the plants grow better you get less pests less disease anything like that um, and, it's, and it looks better. And it's easier to manage as well then? Yeah, and it's easier to manage. So I do that with the runner beans that are, you know, there's half a row planted already. And the same with the French beans. So these in front of us are the peas? Yeah, that's peas, yeah. So I just hit a stake in each end and then run up tight with string. And then this week maybe I'll do another, another line of string up just to keep them all nice and tight. Then you've got some iceberg lettuces there, is it? Yeah, the, the lettuces and things like that, I just dot them along rows whenever I plant anything else out. Don't just to use much. a bit of space, is yeah, it? Yeah, just to use a bit of space. The other good thing about those beans is that um, I'll plant the, the beans will be on the inside of the canes, so then when I come to plant this row up, I'll have loads of space all along here for all the lettuces to grow as well. They like a bit of shade as well. Um, so obviously the, um, the lettuces will have the benefit from the trench that's underneath. Lettuces grow nice under here, beetroot. So have you put any nutrients into the soil? Um, the soil's good here, so you know, there's a massive trench dug, maybe three or four foot deep. And then that was filled with literally everything from the veg garden last year. Um, then it's just a general fertiliser like bloodfish and bone. You even grow children in here as well. Yeah, there's two of them about. Yeah, then they got a football. <laughs> Wales versus England, I think. Only one winner there. What, Wales? So I, I presume some of the flowers here from the broad beans are used in the restaurant? Yeah, they'll, they'll pick some of those and use in the restaurant as well, yeah. And then let the rest um, pollinate for and get the beans from. I do the French beans, that's cobra beans same principle as the runner beans growing outwards again just so it's easier to walk around the outside to pick them as opposed to having them all going in and then having to that's a really good idea actually putting the bits of two by one on top to make making a cross and then yeah and just a bit of water pipe it's easy and then you can keep that every year two screws undo that hit a post in every year, screw them back in and you've got your... So how tall are those posts? About seven feet, six, seven feet? Well, these ones... You're about four feet, aren't you? Yeah, I'm about four foot five. <laughs> so the, these are like six foot posts, so you just hit them in a couple of feet and, the, and then they're solid then. So in front of us here, we've got some potatoes. Are they going to be used in the kitchen as well? Yeah, they'll all be used in the kitchen. There's um, various types that we've got. So each of these, so there's two rows of kestrel here. One's been fed with uh, blood, fish, and bone, and the others have been fed with just six X, which is like a concentrated manure type fertilizer. Just chicken, chicken pellets essentially. Yeah, there's hardly any difference. And then same here, so we've got desiree, just another variety. Same one row with blood, fish, and bone. The other with six X. I suppose. The only time you'll tell the difference in the different feeds is when you actually Crops. pick up the, yeah. the tubers. And then finally this row is the salad blue. So they're a nice variety, heritage variety. And they'll, um, the actual potatoes are blue skinned and blue flesh. Even when you've cooked them, the, the actual flesh of the potatoes is blue, which is something a bit different, something they use in the kitchen. 
they quite like the idea of that. So the gardens here are absolutely fantastic. You obviously work very hard. It takes, yeah, it takes um, probably probably takes me about four hours a day every day in the veg garden, and then the other four hours of each day is cutting grass. But if, if you if you're constantly doing something in the garden that needs to be done, then really you shouldn't really get behind. That's the way I see it anyway. So the next bed here is brassicas and a couple of lettuce planted in between. In front we've got some giant cabbages yeah. and here Daly's growing for them. These gardens here are quite a tourist attraction amongst guests. I would imagine just seeing the sheer size of these cabbages. That one right in front of us there, how big a cross is that if the leaves are flattened? Yeah, but you've only got size two feet. Yeah. <laughs> that, I'm quite happy with these. And um, like you say, this is quite uh, a lot of guests from the hotel walk around and look around the garden. So I'd like to try and plant it up so that when it's all sort of in fruition, if you like, it's all, um, it looks nice. As well as, you know, being effective in growing veg for the restaurant, it actually looks nice as well. So that was the idea of this bed, having the four you know, giant cabbages in the corner, various rows of different coloured brassicas in between, and then in a month or two's time it should start really looking nice in here. So when the guests come round they've got something that's a bit different than just an allotment. So how long have you been doing these gardens? Uh, this would be um, the third or fourth season. Fourth. It's been quite a good project. The the gardens here are absolutely outstanding. Yeah, they yeah, they do look nice now. And, um, it was a shame when the there's two gardeners on the whole estate and when they when we started, so I, um, it was a bit of a mess really. It had four or five years of just total neglect. So sort of in between the beds you couldn't walk between because the hedges were overgrown and all of these were caked in moss and weeds. So it's nice to be able to see it how it is now really pretty much as as I want the veg garden anyway there's other bits to do around the rest of the site but make a bit of scrumpy from the from the orchard right in yeah, front of us plenty of apples there yeah right in front of us we've got some exhibition leeks and some giant onions and there's some elephant garlic which is large garlic right right to the right hand side these are some of the spare plants that Dale has which rather than waste them and put them in the compost heap, they're used up in the garden and then they can be used in, in the restaurant. This is some horseradish. So with these you just use the roots and they take a couple of years to, to establish. But the actual horseradish produced from these is really pungent and just putting this in your tongue is worse than putting a chilli on your tongue. Squash and stuff under it. So this is the squash and the sweet corn. You've encased this with box hedging. This box hedging's had a bit of box blight, has it? Yeah. This this box hedging's probably been here since like the early 70s, but now there's this um, box blight that sort of rips through where every garden has got it really. But we are trying to um, trying to beat the blight with a product called Top Buxus, which it doesn't look like it here, but it is actually starting to reinvigorate the plant so hopefully it'll grow through the the blight as such to otherwise it'll mean we've got to rip it all out and that'll just totally change the look of the, the garden really. And they'll take years to grow back to these? Well if you, if you cut them right back then the, the plants have got blight so they're no good. If, if they don't overgrow that blight then they'll have to be ripped out and replaced with a, just a different type of plant. So maybe you could just raise them up slightly, the box hedge when they grow back? If they, if they grow back, we're just keeping the same height, and that, and you know, the side growth should grow up through this. If it, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, then we'll have to do the same as lots of other big gardens have had to do, and just rip it all out and have a rethink of what to put there. Really, Monty Don ripped all of his out. Yeah, he, he had he had this, and um, it looks like he just ripped it out really without, I don't know. It's too big a job really for us to just rip it all out without trying something first. So 
there's not many products on the market that can sort it out, but the one that we've got, we're going to give a good try anyway. And it, it does, to be honest, it does seem to be, you know, this was all dead. And now we've got new growth, so. Seems to be working. Yeah, hopefully. Right. So this is the final bit of some of the vegetable growing at Stone Eastern Park Hotel. Dale had a £140 marrow last year. The world record stands at just over £200, which is held by Brad Verston in Holland. Our UK record is £171, so Dale was £31 away, so hopefully he can do it this year. Yeah, that's, that's the aim. Is to, uh, well, the aim is for someone in the UK, really, to beat the world record, I think. Marrow is quite a British sort of vegetable. So in here, this is the marrow that started. You've encased that in some green netting for, for wind protection, I yeah, presume. Yeah, just, just to protect from the wind. They, they've been out for a 10 days or two weeks now, and uh, I haven't covered them with plastic or anything like that, so I think they get too hot. So I've just covered it in mesh. I think it's warm enough now for... The soil's definitely warm enough. Um, they look a bit pale, but... I know the soil underneath there is rich and as soon as they do get going they'll be happy so um, it's a bit of a risk trying them so early. Um, so you just got... about three weeks earlier planting out than they were last year but but you, you don't, you know, I'm not going to improve on last year unless you try and push things one way or the other so I'm trying it early this year, if it doesn't work then next year I'll try something else but I've got, I've got faith that, that these plants should be okay definitely good seed and, and I know the soil's good in it. So you've got three growing here? Just three, yeah. With a bit of luck they should just fill this bed. All, all that I added to this bed this year was um, a lot of leaves, like a lot of smashed beech leaves and some seaweed, seaweed meal. Um, obviously the plants have had some They've had some charge and some uh, mycorrhizal fungi from Nigel Davenport. Um, apart from that, oh, and also they had some, I put a starter pack underneath each plant. That's from Ron Wallace, or Wallace Wow, um, underneath each one, the same as I have the pumpkins. So as soon as, soon as they get their roots going, and with weather like this, they'll soon be flying along. Feels like we're on holidays, there always rains in Wales. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tour of all of the vegetable gardens here at Stoneyston Park and some real impressive stuff being grown by Dale and the team here. Dale will be giving you some monthly updates and he's hopefully going to be giving some updates now on some of his exhibition quality vegetables which will be grown for the Malvern Autumn Show. So check back soon. If you've got any comments, make them at the bottom of this video.